Hear ye, hear ye. The Kids Corner Court is now in session. The Honorable Lionel Jacobs presiding. All persons having business before the court come to order. All rise. Be seated. What is the first order of business, Bailiff Monica? The first case is an appeal case, Your Honor. An appeal, you say? Hmm. Sounds like there's a story behind that one. Who's the defendant? Defendant, state your name for the record. Laura. Do you promise to tell the truth? I do. Hmm. Now then, Laura, in your own words, what seems to be the problem? Well, you see, Your Honor, I think I have been punished cruelly and unusually. Ah, a breach of constitutional rights, is it? And what, pray tell, was this punishment and who levied it upon you? My mom. She found out that I stayed up past my bedtime to watch my favorite show, and so she said that I couldn't watch my show for a week. Order! We will have order here! That's why I'm here, Your Honor. I want a different punishment. I see. And what kind of punishment did you have in mind? Oh, well, maybe a friendly warning? And has that worked in the past? Um, well, it was good to be reminded. I'm sure it was. I have come to my decision. You will serve out your week without your favorite show, as ruled by your mother. Case dismissed. What? You're supposed to be on my side. Sorry that didn't work out for you, Laura. I should have known not to trust a grown-up to see things my way. What a rip-off. Do you want to listen to the radio? That usually makes me feel better. Sure. At least that hasn't been taken away from me. Hey, Monica. Is Mr. Jacobs here? Hi, Everett. He was here a little while ago. I think he's taking Flynn for a walk. Oh, what about Miss Fiona? Nope, just me and Laura. And I wouldn't go over there if I were you. She's not super happy right now. What's her problem? Something about staying up late and getting TV privileges taken away. Apparently, she expected Mr. Jacobs to say that her mom was being too hard on her. So when he didn't, well, you see the result. Yeah. Do you know when he's getting back? Not exactly. It doesn't usually take him too long, especially when he knows he's got company. Uh, I guess I'll wait for him then. Do you have a question for him or something? More like a problem. There's a kid in my class who's being really... Mean? Uh, I guess that's the only word for it. It's like if there's any way she can make my life miserable, she does. Putting snow in my book bag, telling the teacher I called her names, Every day, it's a new adventure in how Kathleen is going to get me this time. So you want Mr. Jacob's advice? Yeah, she needs to be punished. I do not! He wasn't talking about you, Laura. Oh. So, anyway, that's my problem. Yeah, sounds serious. Mr. Jacob's level serious. That's why I'm here. Mind if we listen to the radio while we wait for him to get back? We can do that. That is, if Miss Grumpy says it's all right. I'm not grumpy. I'm stewing. Go ahead and start it up, Everett. So, that's what's going on, Mr. Jacobs. She's doing all sorts of mean things, and I'm tired of it. The teachers aren't doing anything about it, and I can't think of anyone else who will help me. Hmm. That's a hard situation, Everett. And it sounds like a lot of bullies I've heard about. Wait. This mean girl's a bully? Aren't bullies supposed to be big, tough guys that beat people up and take their money? Mm, They can be, Monica. But the truth is, bullies can be any size or shape. Basically, if you make people feel helpless or less important than you, you're being a bully. And that's bad. (laughs) I think you know that. Okay, so now that we know that, what am I supposed to do? Shouldn't she get punished for what she's doing? Yeah. I mean, I'm not happy about getting punished for staying up late, but this kind of thing seems like it should at least be stopped. You're not wrong there, Laura, and I'm sure eventually she will be. I'm glad you think so. For the one who's actually dealing with her, though, things don't look too good. You're right. I'm not in your situation. But I do know what the Bible says to do. I know. I need to love her and be kind back. Like it says in Matthew 5.44 and 1 Peter 3.9. You know it's not any easier when you say where it is in the Bible, right? (laughs) No, it probably isn't. But I think it helps to point out that it's not something that I'm making up. But if we're busy loving people who treat us badly, then how are they going to get what they deserve? Good question, Laura. 
verses like Revelation 22:12 and Leviticus 19:18 say, God will make sure that everyone who does evil will be punished. Well, I sure don't see it. Nothing has happened to her yet. You know, I might have a script that can shed some light on this topic. I'll be right back. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the fantastic drama, The Dragon and the Princess, an adapted biblical teaching about revenge. Once upon a time in a faraway kingdom, there lived a princess. Hello, my name is Gloria. Gloria was a very happy princess who lived in a castle with her mother. She's Queen Cora of Grimfen, the mightiest queen of all. Now, my dear, let us not exaggerate. It's true. One morning, they both decided to have breakfast together and talk about their plans. My daughter, what fun things have you planned for this morning? I was going to go out into the wilds of Yondershire and hike through the hills. Sounds absolutely divine. If only I were not bound by royal duties, then I could go with you. Alas, I will be stuck talking about battles and forts with my generals. I'll tell you all about it when I return. Be safe. The princess rode into the beautiful countryside, and after several hours of breathtaking scenery, she dismounted and continued on foot. Say, I smell something new. What she didn't realize was high in the hills, in an ancient cavern, dwelt a scaly, hungry, ferocious dragon. Scaly, yes. Hungry, admittedly. But ferocious is a bit much. I'm more on the malevolent side of things. The beast often lurked in the hills above Yondershire and would capture any traveler fool enough to trespass on his lands. And I believe I see my next victim. Excuse me. The dragon took to the skies and soared among the clouds, wheeling and winding his way to the small path that the princess was walking upon. I say, what happened to the sun? <gasps> the dragon caught the princess in his claws and carried her off to his cave. When they arrived, he locked her in a cage and gloated. Welcome, my prisoner, to your new home. <laughs> I shall enjoy having a new slave to boss around. It's been so long since I've had anyone to terrify and keep awake at all hours. Perhaps you like fire? <laughs> That's right, scamper away. You cannot escape my tunnels and dungeons, little one. Please let me go. My mother will be so worried about me. Oh yes. The begging for mercy. It has been too long. The evil dragon held the princess captive for many months. Every day that passed, Princess Gloria would hope that her mother would come to her rescue, but nothing changed. You keep talking about your mother like she's someone special, little slave. Tell me, who is she? She's the queen, Queen Cora of Grimfen. Cora, I see. And you're her daughter, are you? Yes, and I miss her so much. So much. The dragon seemed rather disturbed by the news. The queen has armies and dragon hunters at her command. It's only a matter of time before she comes after me. The next morning, Gloria awoke. Not in her prison cell, but in a patch of heather outside her mother's castle. I'm free. Is this a dream? No, my daughter. Welcome home. Mother, I missed you. But what happened to the dragon? Did you send your armies to destroy him as I slept? No, actually. The dragon brought you here as I hoped he would. You see, the dragon used to be a servant of mine, but he went bad sometime along the way, and I've been waiting for him to return to me. Last night, he and I had a talk, and he asked me to pardon him. Princess Gloria looked a little confused. But you could have sent your armies and saved me. True, my daughter. But this way, I have my daughter back. And I have my good friend the dragon back as well. The moral is that God is very patient. Sometimes we see people in the world who are doing very bad things, and we wonder why God doesn't punish them right away. The fact is, God is giving them a chance to stop doing what is wrong and be forgiven. 
nobody is too bad for God's forgiveness, and he wants even the worst of people to have a chance to become his child. Is something wrong, Monica? You've been looking through those pages for a while. I think we're missing a page in the drama, Mr. Jacobs. What do you mean? The one about the dragon. That's not how fairy tales end. The knight rides in and slays the dragon. That's how it works. How could the queen let the dragon, who had done terrible things to her daughter, just go free? It is a little weird, Mr. Jacobs. You girls have a point. And though the drama about the princess and the dragon isn't a perfect parallel, it shows us how much God is willing to forgive so that the lost can be saved. Those are some pretty fancy words there, Mr. Jacobs. (laughs) Sorry, Laura. What I mean is, the story isn't too different than what God did for us. Like it says in verses like John 3.16, God loved everyone so much that he gave us a way to be with him. You're talking about Jesus, right? Exactly. By dying and rising again, Jesus made it possible for anyone, no matter how bad, to be forgiven and live forever with God. Forgiven? But what about the punishment? Does it just disappear? No, Monica. The punishment goes instead to Jesus. That's the whole reason God came to earth to pay for all the wrong things everyone has done. So, does this mean that Everett's bully won't get punished? Yeah, you said that God was the one who would see that she gets what she deserves. Will he not now? (laughs) Well, that's the thing about God. He's very patient, and despite what some people think, he doesn't look forward to punishing people. Justice will always be served, but forgiveness is just as important. Okay, one more question, Mr. Jacobs. What's that? What do we do when one of our friends is getting treated badly by someone else? Do we do something about it or just wait for God to do his thing? (laughs) Well, that is a good point, Laura. The Bible does tell us to stand up for people who are being abused. Verses like Psalm 82, 4 say that God wants us to protect people from those who would hurt them. Like how? That can depend on the situation, Monica. Well, how about an Everett situation? I'd say you guys should first go to Everett's parents. They'd probably appreciate knowing what's going on. Oh, yeah. I guess they should know. You didn't tell your parents yet? Oh, brother. See you later, Mr. Jacobs. We've got to get Everett home. (laughs) All right. Want to get the radio on your way out? Sure. Sure.